you uh, you separated the conventional uh, from the organic during your during your talk. Um, why did you do that? Well, on, on on that slide, I had two ends of the spectrum, and of course, on one end of the spectrum, as you said, was the organic, and on the other side was the conventional. And I think that e each one of those has some things included in those management processes that that we can utilize and can be to our benefit. But I think each one also has limitations. And if we take some of those things from each one, we can go beyond what either one of those has to offer by themselves. Take, for example, the organic side. In the organic side, when you certify organic or when you move in that direction, you've basically decided or, or, or stated that you are going to eliminate some things, some tools, such as fertilizers, such as chemicals, some of those tools that are maybe used more frequently in the conventional side. But I'm talking about not only eliminating the bad things, so to speak, but I'm talking about improving on the good things. And the biological approach then, in my mind, would leapfrog where the organic stage is currently, because organic is just a process. I'm talking about biologically restoring the soil. And had those soils been used many years in the conventional side, there's still a lot of that still in the soil. So in process, even if we stop using today, that doesn't mean tomorrow that we have basically a detoxified soil, okay? We need to continue to move in that biological direction and so many of the hardships or challenges or, or even symptoms that show up in either one of those systems, I think that we can move beyond those and really create a nutrient-dense food that isn't necessarily associated with anything other than being nature's way of providing it and us being involved to be the caretaker of it. Very good. Very good. You know, how, how do you think that we're, as an agriculture community, how, how are we going to change mindsets? Because that's what, that's what we need to do. I mean, you know, no, that's a, that's a very good question. Because changing changing mindsets, I believe, is where it really starts. You know, all of this we can we can talk about soil health, and we can talk about making a profit, and we can talk about what equipment to use, and all of those things. But it comes back to what decisions are made in the first place, and that all ties back into psychology. So I think that that what soil health has to its benefit is it ties. Even just the fact that it has the word health in it ties more deeply and directly to us as people and how we function and how we think. And, and once you're kind of on this road of soil health, it then starts tying to so many other things and beneficial relationships um, that I think as this builds, eventually we're going to hit what, what's called the tipping point. And by then we will have enough people that are on board and thinking this way that the rest of, of the critical mass of people automatically falls into place and, and we move forward. You know, they, they talk about uh, that tipping point in, in most cases being between that 16 to 18 percent of the population that needs to be on board and then things start to tip. So the idea that we need the majority is, is not, even, not even the case. If we can hit that tipping point and then get ourselves over that tipping point, I think it will be almost crazy how things will start to fall into place. I believe it's a little bit crazy in how it's grown just in the last few years, but it falls back on people. Not even the soil itself, but people uh, making decisions about the soil. And we're getting closer. And we're getting closer, we're, we're making, ab absolutely. Yeah. We're making progress. There, there's days where we're, we're, we're probably a little bit down, but uh, days like today and yesterday um, convince me otherwise that we're yes. moving in the right direction. Thank you very much.